Welcome to episode 78 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies, plus tips, apps, and gear. And I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg. And this week, my co-host Warren Sklar is off, but I have a returning guest, Mr. Frederick Van Johnson from in, in This Week in Photo.com. How are you doing, Frederick? I'm Welcome doing great. Back. I have the same problems with the name, man. It's, it's I too know. long. <laughs> I hear you. Great to have you back here. And uh, I, I thought... Uh, it's been a while, actually. I mean, I look back; it's um, many, many number of months uh, since last last we talked. But uh, seems like a lot of th- exciting things are happening your way with uh, uh, this week in photo. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Twenty twenty, hopefully, is going to be a pretty big year for for the evolution of the show. It's k- kind of gone through Good. different phases. Good. Yeah, and and, and yeah, and yeah. Great- it's gone through a bunch of different phases, but uh, yeah, we're we're settling and growing up now. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And uh, the great thing is uh, you've got an amazing iPhone uh, 11 Pro Max in your hands as well as I do. And I think photography is at, at its, its excitement right now, I think, uh, with, uh, with these devices. So I think we're going to, that's, that's really what our, our show is going to be about today is just iPhone photography. Do you like the, do you like the acronym iPhoneography? Everybody uses that. I hate it. I, okay. I hate it. <laughs> I, I have a feeling you did because I, I know some people I, I, use that. I'm not a purist or, or, you know, or a Luddite or anything. And it's just like, yeah. you know, all these names for just, it's photography, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's going to change. It's it's just photography. We're just happening to be using these things now. You don't have to change iPhone the name. photography. <laughs> yeah. It, or photography that it happened to have been <laughs> captured with an iPhone. <laughs> with an iPhone. There you yeah. go. Uh, so we're going to hit that. I've got a couple of new stories uh, we'll, we'll talk about. And then um, yeah, let's talk. We'll just, we're just going to just talk, talk, talk about iPhone photography and photography in general. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And, and uh, some, some, some apps that are out there uh, as well as made some improvements. So, so yeah. let's go ahead. Let's get, get going on, on uh, some of the stories I, that caught my eye. I thought this one would be interesting to you as well as this uh, was in, uh, in last week's uh, uh, Verge, uh, Apple's latest startup purchase hints at the next big leap in iPhone photography. So they they didn't use that word. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> App, Apple uh, had acquired a sp- Spectral Edge. I don't know if you heard about this. A UK-based startup whose technology could be used to improve photos taken on iPhones. Um, so yeah. Bloomberg saw this. And uh, I guess Spectral Edge was spun out from research done at the uh, University of East Anglia. I don't know where that is. I don't know. Uh, but but uh, uh, looks like some some new changes with the computational photography, which we're going to talk about. Um, what do you think? This is this is uh, this is pretty exciting that Apple is really dedicating themselves to photography. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they they've spent more. I would imagine. Well, we know for for a fact they've spent more on R and D for computational yeah. photography and and imaging than most startups make or you know <laughs> yeah. have, as it takes to create a giant company apple is just burning through cash to to solve you know the, the the issue of how to make it easy for ordinary consumers to take great looking photos with something in the in their front pocket so yeah, yeah it's crazy it is it's super crazy super crazy but it's a interesting story it's going to be uh it's interesting to see where where that evolves uh for sure and by them buying another startup, I mean that, that just tells you their commitment for sure. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Second story, we're going to say we're going to r- run through these stories quick. Is um, and I've been having a lot of fun with this. I don't know about you, but the, the, since iOS 13 came out, if you, and you obviously hadn't heard my show, but the, I put together a little grid to to show how many versions of iOS 13 has come out since <laughs> September of 2019, and I calculated at least. 12 <laughs> at this point oh, uh, geez. and some of them were two days after each other so it was a crazy thing so of course now as we expect ios 13.3.1 has come out in, or as in beta both public and developers have it now uh i've got a link on the show notes to mac rumors on this uh still no word on what what update there is but um they they did add this new feature called the communications limits in the screen time app and Ooh, i guess there were some, there were some issues yeah there were some issues with the contact app allowing children to text someone who would contact them from an unknown number so the whole point of keeping you secure with the kids so but beyond yeah. that that's all it really is so i have this feeling usually the dot ones the dot twos are, are are minor updates but just wow very frustrating uh with the way ios 13's um release has happened i mean i sure, certainly hope apple learns 
with iOS. Yeah, I, I can imagine it being really frustrating for you because you're sort of marinating in the pool of iOS, yeah. right? For me, yeah. I'm 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 I skew more towards the user side. So yeah, right. I'll, I do both. I'm, I'm happy with waiting and being behind a couple of dot releases sure. and then just letting it rip, you know, one day to update everything. So yeah, but, maybe yeah, it's me getting older. <laughs> no, no, I mean, not everybody's into the beta stuff. And, and I, I've always warned everybody on this show is that don't tread lightly when it comes to beta testing. You, you don't want to do it. My, uh, my co-host Warren loves doing beta testing and he's always on the cutting edge and I always make fun of him for that. So he'll, he'll Yeah, I call it the too, bleeding so. edge. It's the bleeding edge because you always <laughs> get cut up feet. <laughs> yeah, he, if you, uh, 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 he loves to be uh, on beta for everything, including Mac, uh, iOS, every, every, every uh -huh. device he's got. So, so he's a little crazier than I am. I, I have spare devices I can do it on, but not my, not my primary ones. But uh, Yeah, I mean, when, when, you, when you make your living or, or a significant portion of your living, Living with these devices, you know, installing beta is kind of like going to a beta no. hospital. Exactly. <laughs> you know, would, you, would you go to a beta hospital? You're like, we're no. still working out some bugs, but come on in. No. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just crazy stuff. So anyway, that was our quick take on some news. Um, but I wanted to just uh, take advantage of you being here this week and talk. Let's talk about photography. It's, sure. our, it's my favorite topic. And Noah, and Noah of course, it is yours. Um, and um, I'm telling you, I had... I've had the iPhone 11 Pro Max since it's been, it's been released, but taking pictures like crazy with it. And mm -hmm. my gosh, and I, I'm sure you can agree with me. I, it's just how impressed I am with this camera. It just yeah. what, what it does. It, it should be striking fear into the hearts of traditional camera makers. It really should. It really can. I'm, I'm very already, tempted to already, sell my... <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. It's already it's already like gone through the point and shoot market, like Pac Man, right? So those are yeah, those are like gone. And what the kids today don't even know what a point and shoot camera was, right? So it's like they, oh, they don't. they don't. Why would you carry another device to take photos with? Yeah. I mean, my my DSLR has been sitting in my bag in my closet back there for I don't know how long. I don't remember the last time I touched it because since I got this 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 camera and it just. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, this, the, the the wide angle uh, lens on this impresses the heck out of me. I don't know how, how much. How many have you taken a lot of photos yet with the, the wide I've angle? Taken, I've taken tons of photos. With in fact, yeah. we just we just got back a couple of weeks ago from uh, uh, our vacation to Hawaii. That's and right. And this, yeah, this was the first trip like that that I've ever gone on where I didn't take a quote proper camera. Right. So okay. all, the only only imaging devices I took with me were my iPhone and, you know, the 11 Pro S Max um, mm -hmm. or Pro Max and the um, the I got a new drone. So I took the, the Mavic oh, Mini, the little <laughs> tiny Mavic Mini. So it completely changed the loadout of my bag. You know, I actually oh, took fewer bags. <laughs> Charging was different. And I was taking more photos everywhere. We were, you know, at the, you know, sushi and I'm taking photos at the, you know, inside the sushi place where you <laughs> never right. would have done that with a real, quote, real camera. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it was on the beach with us. It was everywhere. You know, we were, we were taking photos and videos and sharing them. The more, more important thing is we were sharing them with friends and family back here on the mainland, right. you know, real right. time while we're still out there playing around. So it was you can't really do that with a, with a traditional camera easily. Mm -hmm where you're you're shooting that that normal flow would be you shoot now you got to spend some time downloading and tweaking yeah. in the hotel room and then you upload and then you know you're out again not you know taking pictures of of the dish before it's gone you know <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy it, it's really crazy and um i'm really impressed of how they've improved just just the navigation uh by by actually holding on to each one of the the, the lenses um, you having that spin dial and being able to spin between all the way up from 0.5 all the way up to the, the 10x uh, digital yeah. zoom um, yeah. and you, it, just navigation is just just phenomenal I mean the, I'm yeah sure you, and if you if if you're if your listeners ever have a chance to pop over to Apple's page and look at the, the camera area they or even just Google or or you search on YouTube for this but they've done a, a breakdown of what happens when you when when you, you the, when you're aiming at something with the camera and how it's analyzing the scene and creating right. different exposures for different parts of the scene and if it sees people in there and all these different things that it's doing in that millisecond 
that, that, right. that it takes before you click the shutter. And it, it's doing that repeatedly millions of times uh, a minute. It's just crazy how, how it can do all that stuff just in the service of creating a picture that looks great, right? And, that, and that's it with no post-processing required. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, Apple has a great website, the uh, web page uh, uh, on photography how to, which I'll actually link that in the show notes. Um, yeah. That uh, that just talking about all the all the basics of photography, and you know, you and I being uh, you're a professional photographer, I'm probably an amateur, but a very good a good photographer in the sense of understanding the the different concepts, you know, with depth control and and mm-hmm. uh, lens opening, f stops, all that stuff. Um, but it, it really it just blows my mind what what this camera can really do um and between just that alone and then the modes themselves even video video is just insanely improved too um yeah i know it I, has I bet, you, I, I bet you did a lot of video shots when you were um, i did yeah yeah tons of, maybe maybe 50 50 video and stills to be honest with you and then you know i i look at the shift of of the you know the the viability of these smartphone cameras Mm-hmm. sort of taken over is sort of analogous to, you know, when, when we got uh, uh, automatic transmissions in cars, right? right. So That's when it analogy. was standard, when it was standard, you did cars, you could get to from point A to point B, but it took a lot more effort and know how, know how and coordination to get there safely. And uh, then the automatic transmission came. Now it opened up the, the car driving experience to l- tons of more people they can drive without having to have drive a stick. Same thing with this photography stuff. You know, we were doing mm-hmm. photography since the, you know, the black and white derogatype era. And, but only certain people back then had the skill set or the funds to do it. And then, you know, it, then it sort of gradually went down, you know, now, now it's anybody can do it because the computer is doing most of the heavy lifting for you and you can concentrate on the composition of the image and the artistic in interpretation of what you're trying to say with that yeah. image versus trying to split your brain into half scientist technician and the other half artist in order to get a good shot. Right? And, and you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. I mean, you're going to case in point is I, I, I pulled out a box the other day. I was looking for some photos of a particular uh, thing that I, I had and I remembered, Oh, I know where it's at. So I go up in, in, in my closet here and I go pick up, uh, I have a shoebox full of old photos and negatives and slides and uh, the old days. Yeah. Uh, and I pull out the photos and looking at it. Like, you talk about composition. I'm looking at some of the stuff that I, I took uh, this, this, this picture. Obviously I did, I could not use a flash. So it was like one of like really orange, you know, back in those mm-hmm. days, you, you didn't have that option. If you, you were told not to use a flash, you, either you dealt with what you took or, 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 yeah. or it's a bad photo and you just throw it out. So, yep. uh, but I, you know, now with these, fo- with, even with these photos, now you could take, take the iPhone and take a picture of that photo and you probably will get better results with, <laughs> exactly. with, with that, that to take me all that old photo. That's why we see so many old photos now, which is just awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, uh, that, that happens. So, um, that that in itself, I think, is just just amazing with with this camera. Um, yeah, all all the modes have just been improved. I mean, have you done a lot? Of, I'm going back to the modes here. Have you done any time lapse or slow motion photography at all with these? Uh, yes, I have. Absolutely, yeah. My daughter is in gymnastics, so oh, perfect. You know, you could. Yeah, the slow motion is perfect for that, you know, and yeah. I'm, I'm getting slow motion. And even she likes to look at them because she sees yeah. how she's doing her different moves. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's educational at that point because you can see the, every little movement. And yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. So we've done that. Uh, I haven't done very many time lapses yet. Just more of just let me see mm-hmm. if it works, you know, nothing, nothing intentional. So, but that's, but I, I think the most used modes are the, the slow motion on video, regular video, right. zooming in and out, you know, as appropriate. Oh, yeah. And then uh, portrait mode for sure. So portrait mode is just, is there, magic. There, and that's what I was just going to hit right next is portrait mode. Now go ahead and t- I'll just let you just tell me your thoughts. I mean, I, I can, I can go through cause there's so many great things with the lighting. And yeah. I mean, it, it, from a, way. from a, from an old school photographer's perspective where yeah. we used to camera bag, carry a, a, a camera bag full of lenses, you yeah. know, and the expense of all those lenses and the weight of all those lenses, all in the service of being able to take photos and, and varying lighting conditions or low lighting conditions. And if we're doing portraiture or some sort of thing where we want to isolate the subject against the background with bokeh, then we, you know, we wanted to blur the background. 
But now with this portrait mode, even even yeah. on non-humans, you know, if you always want to take a photo of a, a glass of beer and blur the background out behind that beer, you can do that program, pro, programmatically with this computation of photography and seamlessly. So, it, you know, when they first launched this feature, you, you know, we saw the yeah. artifacts around the edge where it was masking and all that. Mm-hmm. And, and every successive release is to get it gets better and better and better. And now for nine times out of 10, for me, the, the blurred background version of a photo is indistinguishable from a traditional photo I took with a, with a wide aperture. It is yeah. just, it's that good, right? So we're there now. So though that's another thing, you know, going from stick shift to automatic. Now yeah. people don't have to worry about the expense of buying that lens or understanding mm-hmm. why, do the, why do the numbers get smaller as the, as the opening gets bigger? You know, they have to understand any of that science. They just say, hey, I want to do a shot of grandma and I want the background blurry. Click, drag, and you have a blurry background. Done. Yeah, you know, it's and it, so just, you can get back to get back to hanging with grandma now instead of being exactly. a scientist and an artist. And and yeah, editing and and uh, going in that. I, I'm, you're gonna be back to old school here. I got to think you get the dark room and yeah, the larger and doing all the filtering and the, all that stuff. Remember all that stuff you had to do. I remember with, that. Remember if you wanted a vignette, you had to know how to do. Yeah, you know, you had the all that stuff. You got to burn yeah. the edges in. You got to get a piece of cardboard and cut your oval out yeah. and put it on a coat hanger and oh, you know block so the light. Times. Yeah, yeah, we all we all had our little favorite little arsenal of dodge and burn tools to get the right of <laughs> that was completely so many terms completely that we don't unrepeatable, <laughs> right? It's completely unrepeatable. You you got the perfect vignette, you could do it again, right? So. Uh, anybody, uh, anybody, it's a young and I, we say the two words dodge and burn. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, you're like, is that a, is that like a, a death metal group or something? I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But uh, the other great thing about, as you talked about with portrait is just the, 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 the post editing and, and, and then just, just the pure editing. They've, 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 they've Apple just even did an improved job with editing. I almost mm-hmm. think I don't even need another editing program anymore because everybody yeah. talks about all the you know, uh, touch retouch. And we've talked about other apps before in the past, but I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know if you even have to go to some of these apps anymore. Um, you with, you, you really don't for the most part. I still, I, the, the main apps that, that my, my phone would tell on me that I launch regularly are the, yeah. the, uh, just the, the native camera app, of course, and right. Snapseed. And the Snapseed. reason I use Snapseed from time oh, to time no, is it has the cloning tools in there. It's got a bunch of stuff in there that the, the native camera app does not have. Um, and you know, I, and I'm used to using it. I've been using it for years and years. So I know my way around. I know how to crop stuff easy. I can get what I want out of it quickly. Uh, but for, for taking photos, you know, it's, it's all the camera app and snap, 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 snap. And then if I, if it's something simple, like just a crop or a tweaking of contrast or something, I'll do it in the camera app on the phone. If it's more involved and I'm like, okay, I took a picture of David. I got to take this, I got to take this, you know, AirPods Pro out of his ear and I'm going to clone it out. Then I'm going to use Photoshop oh, on the phone or noticed. Snapseed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I said, so, you notice I have those, didn't you? <laughs> I see them. I see them. You got them. Uh, yeah, yeah. I did all, I did a whole thing on, on the AirPods Pro. They're absolutely amazing. That's a whole other topic. Yeah, yeah. I love um, mine. I got them. I, I wish I could yeah. have them surgically grafted to my head. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> same way, same way. They're just awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah, the all the lighting. I, I'll just kind of describe. I mean, the contour lighting that's in here, the studio light, and what's cool about it is you can go back to the photo later and make these same changes. Uh, the same yeah. thing with your depth of field, uh, changing the uh, they call it the depth, what we call an f stop, you know, lens mm-hmm. opening. So we're going from a two point eight, which is a much wider opening, and giving a, a lots of. Uh, Lots of uh, focus versus a uh, very small aperture or depth, which go down to what twenty two or thirty two, but it, mm-hmm. it's blurring. It's blurring the background. It, it's, it's, it's the reverse. It's, 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 that's the thing about f stops. It's the reverse of what you said. So the smaller the number, oh, I'm sorry, the I wider flipped. the wider the I opening, flipped. the blurrier the background. Yeah, is it, right, that's right, right. that gets everyone. It got me. That used I, to give no, you all I, the time. I knew that. I just flipped it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Uh, and but. Uh, you all, I mean, the thing is you can go all the way down to 1.4 on this. And then that, and those were always lenses that you that were always very expensive to have in your bag. If you wanted to have yeah. an F 1.4 lens. So you've got the flexibility to go all the way up to this F 16 to, 
to work with your depth of field. So, um, yeah. And it looks, it looks entirely convincing for the most part, especially for online usage, right? Cause the, the majority of the photos that people take these days, let's face it, right. are not making it to print, you know, a small percentage make it to print right. especially large print. The most of them are being shared on Facebook or Instagram or right. some other online service or just emailed back and forth to friends and family. So right. at that resolution, the technology that Apple is applying to the photo is is overkill because it, it is it's mm -hmm. it's knocking on the door of professional photographers right now. And, you know, most of the people that are using these devices are definitely not that and don't need that level of quality, but they have it anyway. Oh. So it's awesome. It's in their hands. Yeah. Um, the other the other uh, great feature they added was night mode. Um, yeah. I could, all I have to say is, wow. I mean, what? Yeah. What? Amazing yeah, it's magic magic it does with photography i've seen and i've taken yeah that's too, another sure thing you, you know we're talking about it's basically we're talking about money here because you mentioned you mentioned that the faster the lens which means the wider right. the opening and the more light it can suck in right, right so right. the those lenses get exponentially more expensive the faster they are right so if you go with like a, a f1.2 lens which is one of the fastest lenses fastest. available yeah yeah so there's some faster void lenders that are even sub one F stop right, but <laughs> but, but even though you're you're paying you're paying like you know it, the money that you would spend to buy a Mac on these lenses yeah. you know or more or sometimes multiple Macs you know almost almost the Mac Pro <laughs> yeah almost the Mac Pro but yeah. but but that's for this physical glass thing and the same thing on the sensor yeah. side if you want a, a a camera that can you know take a picture of a black cat in a in a dark closet. That's yeah. going to cost you. That's probably one of the Sony cameras, right? That's gonna, that's going to cost you that level of money for those those sensors that can, you know, pick up low amounts of light and make a usable image. What Apple yeah. is doing, they're giving you that. You're getting a lot of that capability in the phone, and it could do all that stuff, you know, for the most part. Now, granted, you know, optics and sensor size and all that resolution. You're not going to be doing these kinds of photos and hanging them in the Louvre or something, right? But but for all intents and purposes, for what we're using them for, it, it, you can get a shot of that black cat in a dark closet and it'll be perfectly yeah. usable on Instagram or Facebook, yeah. right? Yeah, it's crazy. Absolutely. And what it does is, and uh, just so everybody knows, I'm sure they know them using the camera, is it's got that small little orange button at the top next to the flash icon and it counts out how many seconds it's going to take to, to, to do the exposure. Now, mm -hmm. think about that, too, when we used, we, we've taken our old, uh, going back to the, the Nikon, Nikromat EL I had, or a Pentax K1000, or any of those film cameras where you had to take a picture and uh, you uh, had to uh, put it down to one in two seconds. And the only way you could, uh, the only way you could uh, get a good picture is you had to have it on a tripod. Well, yeah, holding this in your hands, I, the, 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 the computational photography of it all, uh, uh, adjust to that so you, yeah well they're, they're, they're using all shaking. kinds of things yeah it's they're, they're adjusting the using computational photography they've got you know image you know stabilization on the lens itself so the lens is moving right. inside the camera to compensate for yeah. things and the, obviously the computer systems within the camera or the phone know exactly where that lens is at any given time and how to compensate for the moon it's doing yeah. mountains of math probably more math than it took to get to the moon every time you take a shot yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it just it's it just yeah uh, i i get speechless sometimes of what this thing mm -hmm. can do um yeah, yeah. But, the, but you have to think about it, David, I would think about it from the standpoint of, yeah, you get speech from, a, you know, we can nerd out about it, but from an yeah. artistic standpoint, no, what, artist, what, yeah. the, what they're giving us, what Apple and companies that are making other competing cameras like this are giving us is the ability to have the technology get out of your way so that ultimately you, you want to express whatever this, your vision is for this particular shot the the technology previously that's been in the way like expense of fast lenses and fast sensors and you know understanding the math of f-stops and shutter speed and iso all the, all those things were hurdles in the way just to get to the part where you you understood it and could make get your mind's eye vision out there so other people could see it what apple is doing they comp they're compressing and removing those hurdles so we the path to get to creativity and and getting that shot you had in your head is very short now. 
So yes. it's not no less no less quality there is, you know, we don't have to ride a horse to get cross country. We can jump in a plane and be there in five hours. Right? Yeah. So yeah, it's exactly. just technology, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, other mode I didn't talk about is a panorama. And did you take yeah. any panoramic shots when you were in, in Hawaii? You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I use panorama all the time. Yeah. You know, Hawaii is the, you know, it, it's almost the obligatory location on the planet where you have to do a panorama. You or have two. to. You have <laughs> yeah. to. Now, um, it, it is, it can be a little awkward at times the way you have to move from, uh, from, uh, from left to right uh, when you, when mm-hmm. you move the lens. And of course you have to hold, the, you have to hold the phone uh, in the horizontal, uh, the port, the, uh, the uh, portrait position uh, mm-hmm. and um and uh, so it can it can be a little conspicuous and i i've done it sometimes or i get a little i get a little fall oh my god oh, lose a little balance there but yeah you, but, but but if you're if you're if you're slow enough with it you can uh really master it i've taken some amazing shots i mean i when i was in wine country in california i know i have a great a great shot of the of a, of a sunset uh, that that came out and uh they're just yeah it, it, it's awesome um, yeah, it does a great job. You know, there's 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 two things I would share about the panorama. The number one is um, you and your listeners, if you haven't done this yet, try doing vertical panoramas. So, yeah. like if you're in in a big city, New York, Chicago, whatever, and you want to do a shot of a sky rise or a high rise building, yeah. stand mm-hmm. at the base of it and pan, put your camera in, in panorama mode and pan in the so direction you- of that arrow vertically. Yes, it's like that. So, yeah. So, so, so that's what I was going to ask you about if you're doing it vertically versus or horizontal. No, um, yeah. Hold the camera. Hold the camera uh, in horizontal. And then you have to move down. And then you have to yes. move down to take the picture. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So and then you can you can basically do a vertical panorama, and you know some they're they're a little bit wonky because it's not a hundred percent designed for doing verticals. Right. Because you get not, some. Yeah. yeah, you'll get some. Uh, you know, depending on the building and how close you are to it, you may get some distortion, but you may like it. You know, it's a, it's a fun thing to try. Yeah. The that. other thing is um, within Photoshop, if you're if your listeners are using Photoshop or similar yeah. applications, you can do multiple rows of panoramas with your phone. So if you really want a, a large amount of detail, say you're doing a shot of something iconic like the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, and there's there's a beautiful cloud pattern happening above it, you got the bridge in the middle, and then down below it, you've got the water and the skyline and all that stuff. So you could do three or four passes of panoramas and then take those three in files that get generated and put them right. in, bring them into Photoshop or Lightroom and stitch them together vertically. So now okay. you have, uh, you know, basically a gigapixel shot of that scene yeah. that you crop in. You can really do some, you can play, do a lot of stuff with it because you can bring it into a video application and pan right. around in the image without losing resolution or print it big or whatever, whatever you want. So, yeah. So no, it, it's definitely, and, and to think about being able to do it from this device versus what you had to do in the past with panorama. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. you don't have a team out there with you. Ca- <laughs> and you, had a special, you had to have a special camera. I remember those old special panoramic cameras. The g- they, gigapans, they yeah. yeah. The gigapans yeah. where you had to understand the concept of the nodal point yeah. and, you know, all this <laughs> math and, exp- again, math so. expense and effort, you know, just to get the shots. Now you can just stand there and it's like, hey, hey guys, I know we're walking. Stop for a second. Let me get this panorama. Yeah. You knock it out and then keep walking. <laughs> So I know I was going to ask you about, uh, you know, holding your camera vertical or horizontal, especially when um, you take videos. Now, most of the mm-hmm. time, the, the rule of thumb has always been horizontal. You should have it the sideways uh, do that, right? Um, yeah, well, that's a, good, that's a good question. I was just having this, question, this, this discussion with a friend of mine uh, over the weekend. The, okay. he, he, he was of the mind that video was designed to be 16 by 9. Horizontal frames, our computer right. screens are horizontal, like, monitors, televisions, et cetera, everything's horizontal. Uh, and our phones, if, if held in that position, are horizontal. I agree to a degree. And, the, you know, the, the one thing with photography that you learn is that the rules aren't rules. There are no rules, right? So that rule of, of everything that needs to be horizontal is designed to be broken, especially in the case of if you're shooting video specifically to send to someone else to watch on a phone. Right. And right. it makes sense for them to be in portrait mode. Like say you're doing a video and you're talking, having a conversation with someone, you know, we don't force that other person to turn their phone horizontal just because you wanted to have that cinematic experience. 
if yeah. it's going to fill the frame better, keep the frame in portrait mode and record a video that way. Sometimes it's better to film in portrait mode, depending on who's going to be looking at that particular content. If you're going for cinematic and you're going for old school movie theater style stuff, then yeah, by all means, shoot horizontal, but don't lock yourself into thinking everything I shoot when I shoot video must be in horizontal landscape mode or else I'm a failure. That's not true. (laughs) (laughs) True. Um, I failed at life. I shoot in vertical. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's what I say. That's the, that's what everybody say. That's the, the the video of shame. You didn't, you did vertical. You didn't do horizontal. Yeah. See Uh, if it, if it was something that needed to be horizontal, like, you know, you see these, these shots of something significant, a plane crashing, plane is crashing into the river and they have to put bars on the side of it because the person was filming vertically. Yeah. Come on. You know, because you see see those all the time on on the news. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. It's just like, look at what you're shooting. And if it makes sense to shoot it horizontal, shoot it horizontal, you know, it doesn't have to always be vertical, you know, or always be horizontal. A couple of features of the phone, um, of the, of the camera, um, burst mode. Have you done too much with burst mode? We're doing, uh, I have, uh, you know what I have, but you, you know, frankly, honestly, um, I've, I've done it, but accidentally. <laughs> Cause yeah. I, I've, you know, you're holding something, you're holding the button. Yeah. Yeah. You hold the button down. It's going to go into burst mode. Uh, but I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know if, I haven't done it because I just haven't thought about using burst mode or if the things that I'd want to shoot burst mode in, I just shoot video, you know, cause it's, okay. you know, or slow motion video. So, you know, the, to, to shoot something that's, that happens in, let's say my life that is happening at such a high frame rate that I need to use burst mode and then go back later and harvest the image out of there. Um, if I'm doing something like that, I'm probably going to want to use a regular camera. Because the okay. my, I shoot Panasonic and my Panasonic cameras will allow me to do that, but on kind of an industrial level, right? I can already, if I need that quality. Otherwise, you know, right? You know, why not? Why not just shoot video or slow motion? The other example is uh, the live, you know, the live video or the live uh, set, uh, setting on the, when you take photos. You, know, you have the live live photo. Um, so when you take a picture and then it's and it has like two or three. Uh, like a, a one or two seconds of a, of a of a of a video because it's doing live live video. So I mean, when you tap and hold on it afterwards, and you can see people you know, moving into different positions and yeah, all that. I I heard the probably one of the best of reasons why you'd want to do that and be able to uh, go back later is always people's eyes are shut when they take their pictures. And then right. with having those those two or three shots taken after the fact, you might get lucky and be able to grab that photo and then go make that the primary photo instead of um, yeah no absolutely you're or just some some weird nuance in facial expression or something yeah it's like in one frame they they look like they're grimacing in the next frame they look like they're happy right so yeah to be able to scrub between those and and get the right one yeah i think one of the takeaways is like none of these there are no like hard and fast rules in photography, you know, right. and, and anyone who tells you there are, they, there are rules in here or, you know, they're selling you a bill of goods. It's all, it's all what's, what your idea of what that shot should look like, what you want to shoot, what your vision is, you know, in your interpretation of how to use these different tools, like vertical right. panoramas, who knew? <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then uh, the other feature that kind of, always stands out to me is the quick take uh, video shortcut button taking being able to take pictures while you're taking video um oh I, right yes yeah i've used that uh, absolutely i have used that and yeah. i think that comes in handy a lot of times it might be like oh i want to get a shot of that real quick and because before you would, if you had a video camera what would you do you have to stop the camera and go get your other camera and then take a picture well, yeah i think yeah. that feature was i mean it's it's not it's not too much of a talked about picture uh feature uh that uh, but it's fantastic uh, i've used, i use it just the other day my daughter was doing a, a christmas recital at school and of course i wanted to get the the entire uninterrupted video of the song but then right. i wanted stills to you know to share with people through social media or through group texts and all that sort of thing so you know what do you do you roll video and then every now and then click that shutter button and get a great right. get a still that's it that's what it's for it's exactly um 
Let's go, let's go a little bit into the into the into photos and going actually into a photo and editing it. Um, okay. I think they just added some amazing tools in here all by themselves. Um, even the uh, the auto tool where you can actually tap a button and it actually uh, automatically adjusts exposure and everything just to make it you know, without you having to spend any much time on it. Then you go into the other modes where you can change it to the different colors like the vivid and warm and original. Um, but the cropping tool itself, I, I, I'm impressed about the cropping tool and being able to, because that's people, the first thing a lot of people do, oh, I got to crop that person out. <laughs> but mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. It, it does an amazing, it's amazing how it straightens so easily. Well, what, don't, yeah. don't you think that's a, one, of the, one of the more powerful tools that's uh, on, in there? It is, it is, you know, because when I first started shooting, they used to tell me one of my legs is shorter than the other because all my yeah. hori- horizons were all, <laughs> were all slanted. <laughs> Yeah. But to have, you know, to have that either fixed automatically for you or be able to just do it in a couple of taps, you know, without having to even figure out through a grid or whatever, you know, how to how to get your horizon level or get the image level is, you know, again, another step towards getting out of my way, you know, hardware, get out of my way. Let me get the shot that I want to get. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Then the uh, the other one is uh, going into the different uh, styles of of uh, the, the photo composition. You know, going from original to freeform to square. You can change it to like a nine by sixteen as opposed to a six by sixteen by nine, or eight by ten. And actually, you know, changing the aspect uh, mm-hmm. uh, aspect of the photo on the fly. That was always a that was always a challenge, at least for me. When even when you would do it on your Mac or if you would do it in other places to edit, uh, I think it's great they have these tools here. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah. And and that's what they are. They're tools, you know, and frankly, you know, not that I'm, you know, I'm a a representation of of the, you know, people that use phones for photography. But when I look at my sample size of one, those those level features, I'm not even using, you know, once I once I pick the aspect ratio that I want my photos in everything generally is going to be shot like that, you know, unless I need to crop it later. And then I'll take it into the app or into Snapseed or whatever and crop. But I don't, I don't, you know, I, I'm not so anal about my, my, the, my iPhone photography that, you know, I have to like be cognizant of, is this one to one or is this 16 by nine or is it five, seven or what, you know, I'm just, I pick that four, three, I'm good to go. And that's what everything's going to be shot in, in until I decide to change it to something else for some reason. But uh, it, it, it did add a lot of these other, uh, other settings too, like the sharpness and definition warmth. Yeah. Um, Vignette. There's there's your vignette setting we talked about earlier. I mean, it's, yeah. It, the only it, problem with the vignette is you can't move it. That's the yeah. that's the that's the only problem with it. You know, and that that's been the problem with. I don't know why, like software manufacturers don't understand vignetting. Like you you want to be able to vignette a specific around a specific point. Like if I did a photo of you, you know, I don't want the vignette just to be dead center. I want to bring it down so it's highlighting you in the frame, not the frame itself. So. You know, they haven't, unless I'm missing something, they haven't, Apple hasn't done that. You know, if you're going to put a vignette right. on there, it's just going to darken uniformly around the corners. Whereas in Snapseed, I can move my vignette around to right. where I want it to be. So, which is why I still go to Snapseed when I do portraits for the most part. Yep. I still have it on there. Um, uh, and the number of them I've already talked about, uh, Camera Plus 2. I don't know if you used mm-hmm. that much. Uh, they just have I some new exactly, features. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I haven't used Camera Plus in, um, geez, that was Lisa Betney's app Lisa from Bettany, way yeah. back. Yeah, way back in the day. I remember when that first came out, and I played with it uh, several times. And I was kind of using it as my go-to everyday right. app, uh, and then for some reason I stopped. And then you know, well, they got I a new know, version yeah. out now. I, I have it as okay. an app. I have, uh, play pick. With it. I have it as an app pick. They actually uh, brought some. They, there, there was an article here that says twelve gifts that they that they gave you for using it but uh the cool thing is it, it in the menu you actually can get to it get to any of the other apps that are on your device by you know just going to uh options and it'll bring you to any photography based app that's uh that's uh, that's available so yeah um, and that's what uh that's what makes it great to, to, to puts all in one place here so um, did you did you hear yeah, as a podcaster you can you can appreciate this mm-hmm. um that and when they launched apple launched this particular camera they had a, a company called filmic i think it's filmic yes come on yeah they came on stage and they I demonstrated yeah yeah but they said they said you're gonna be able to record with both cameras simultaneously so it, what happened. i saw 
Yeah, it still hasn't happened. I'm waiting on that. But what I, in my head, as a podcaster, I saw that means I could do a whole two person, two camera interview yeah. with someone with my phone <laughs> and then edit it you on could. the phone and then, you know, be done with it. Um, still waiting on the update. Apple Filmic. <laughs> Don't know where it is. I think it's Filmic. <laughs> or, uh, our, our, our pal Chuck Joyner actually just uh, did an interview with those guys and uh, I didn't oh, see cool. them even mention. I didn't even see them. Men- I didn't hear them mention that. Uh, what? That, that's, that was that, on it's stage notes, at Macworld. <laughs> I know, it, and it's in it's in their in their app notes too. When you go in to buy buy the app, and it says a uh, note: this, this feature has not been added since announced at WWDC. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, it's at Macworld. Yeah, WWDC great. is what it was. Uh, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. Um, uh, the, okay, well, then why did you announce it? <laughs> if you can, yeah, this, it seems like that's the egg on the face for Apple. You know, it seemed like Apple would have vetted it and said, "Hey." Guys, when are when are you going to launch this? You know, and I even think during that keynote presentation, they said it was due out, you know, this year or early next or something like that. It wasn't that long away because I think a lot of people that I know went and purchased the phone in anticipation of that feature. You know, so if they had said something like, yeah, it's coming in late 2023, no one would have cared. Right. But it was it seemed imminent. In fact, it seemed like, oh, is this available now? And then, you know, no, it's good. It felt like it was like a couple of months away or something. And now we're yeah. moving into 2020 and I still don't have that app on my phone. So somebody <laughs> should be embarrassed. Well, I did buy it. So I'll, I'll, being the fact that I've piled up so many uh, App Store, iTunes Store uh, uh, cards because they always had those $100 for 80 that I kept buying. And I start realizing <laughs> I have a really large balance on my account right now and I can't take it out. So I have a lot of purchasing to do for the next three years uh, uh so awesome. a lot a lot, a lot lot of tv uh tv plus is free for 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 a year but a lot yeah. of, uh, well i hope i hope Apple they're giving you interest and, on that they better be giving you interest yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, somebody yeah. i can guarantee you david somebody's making interest on that <laughs> they are they are so uh yeah. so i was talking i i have art, i have this as a link to one of the apps and we'll, and we'll kind of close out with this um, yeah uh, this is a camera plus they camera plus two. There's a the camera plus, like you said, Lisa Benny was part of that when it first came out. Yeah, gosh, that was 15 years ago at least. Yeah, maybe 10. Yep. Uh, I don't know the app, the iPhone's not that old. Uh, but um, it's been a while, and uh, she I know she had since sold it, so it's a different, a different other company, Late Night Soft, I guess, is the company that uh, that has it now. So there was some uh, some 12 features that they've added, uh, and, and then they're listed in this article here. Uh, a couple of them, different, a little more, a little more editing than you probably ever need. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, um, I, I, I see they did. I, I had a timestamp where you're going to able. To, where you, I don't. I have not seen too, that too many editing apps that allows you to do that. Not that I know how important that is to most people. Uh, if you want the timestamp sitting on the on the photo, but um, and uh, so uh, I don't know if you had a chance to peek through this yet, but uh, yeah, I'm looking at there, it now. Yeah, there's. Um, there are 12, 12 features we could you could t- give the, give that a take a look at because uh, but again I, I I keep pressing the fact that I think the editing app that's built into the iPhone is probably going to be perfectly fine. Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a case of of basic physics. You know, it's like path of least resistance. I think the, the, these apps are fantastic and beautiful, and I look forward to interviewing all these guys. But you know, when I sure. when I when I think of my sort of knee jerk day to day actions as a consumer. It's, you know, launch the phone, snap a photo, put the phone back in my pocket. I'm not launch. I'm not waking the phone up, finding the app or searching for the app, launching the app, making sure it's in the right mode, taking a photo and then doing all these whiz bang things to it. I'm taking a photo and it's, it's, and even with, with the camera being on the, you know, the sleep screen, when you just wake it up, being able to launch the camera directly from there within a second means I'm not going anywhere else. You know, I may go somewhere else for some some high end editing, but as far as photography and that sort of thing, I don't I don't see me doing anything or even rudimentary editing, except yeah. in the built in app right now. And they keep enhancing it. I mean, they just bought that company you mentioned at the top of the show, right? right. So right. it's getting better and better. It's like you know, uh, why would I leave my cozy, warm? perfectly furnished apartment with <laughs> never ending bandwidth and all the toys I can play with to go experiment in the, you know, the, the outside. <laughs> exactly. So. Exactly. So, well, I, I, it was a real big treat to have you here this, uh, this time around. Um, I, I know, uh, everybody's going to probably, well, I hope they enjoyed listening to this episode because, uh, 
photography is always a great topic and, um, and we don't take a lot of time with, especially when it relates to iPhone. Uh, people like to talk about it for a couple of minutes and then they move on. But I thought this is a, a, a good discussion. Um, I appreciate you being here. Um, so Frederick, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you and where they can find you. Yeah, um, all roads lead to thisweekinphoto.com. That's the website. That's where our podcast is. We have a, a community there that you can join up and become a member of. Uh, we'll I be launching joined. our store there soon. <laughs> yeah, you just joined. Welcome, welcome, member. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's a it's a it's a good it's a good group of as you've seen, David. There's a, it's a good group of intelligent grown-up photographers in there you know yeah. it's not yeah it's not a whole lot of my camera's better than yours and look at you know none of that stuff it's more these are adult conversations or mature conversations about photography and substantive sure. feedback and dialogue going on in there so that's what i that's what i try to curate well, I, I put a link to, in the show notes uh, for, uh, about you and uh, you got your trip school, all your different topics that you put together there and you got your stuff, pocket shooters out there, right? For uh, yeah, yeah, uh, iOS absolutely. photography. Um, so yeah. people want to take that course. Uh, they can uh, learn a little more about the, I don't know, is that still, is that still current or? It is still current. We're updating it shortly. And we're also bringing everything off of where, like if you go to twipschool.com right now, you'll see, basically you'll okay. see the current iteration of the school, which is being repurposed under thisweekinphoto.com very okay, shortly. Cool. So yeah, every it's all, you know, like we said, e pluribus unum, right? So from many, <laughs> <laughs> from many show, entities come true. one. <laughs> so, yeah. I just want to give you an opportunity to tell all your listeners about what you offer and again, Thanks for being here. So let's uh, go ahead and wrap. Thank you. Let's let's go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address: feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at intouchwithios, and you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio, as well as iHeartRadio. Or better yet, uh, why don't you go to our website at intouchwithios.com? All the links, to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave. Ginsburg and, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Thanks again, Frederick, for being here. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And, and uh, thanks again for listening, everybody, and talk to you again soon. <laughs>